Welcome, thank you for tuning in to this edition of Chicago Live. I'm your host, Larry Fisher. And today on the set with me, I have my friend. Um, she is a, a broadcaster here, her and her husband. She is Jacqueline Rhymes, Prophetess Jacqueline Rhymes. Her husband is Kenneth Rhymes, Apostle. And they are the senior leaders of the Ordained of God Full Gospel Church of Riverdale. And um, I'm, she's here with me today. We're going to be talking about an event that they hold um, annually in the Chicago area, and um, it's called Boots on the Ground. So I want to welcome um, Prophetess Jacqueline Ryan. God bless you. God bless you, Apostle. Thank you for Thank having you. me here on Thank you for coming out today. so early in the morning. Amen. Um, we, um, we, 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 as you know, we launched the magazine, iMag, and in the magazine, we, um, we put some information regarding your event. Uh, and we wanted to just take some opportunity to, to share uh, even more about the event because the event is centered around um, prayer. Yes. And so I want you to just, before we get started, just tell us a little bit, our audience a little bit about your ministry, and then we're going to talk about Boots on the Ground, how all that got started. Okay, well, um, our ministry is Ordained of God, Full Gospel Church, where my husband, Apostle Kenneth Rhines, is the senior pastor, mm -hmm. and I co-pastor with him. Uh, Boots on the Ground is a subsidiary of or Ordained of God. It's a prayer ministry. It started off as a prayer ministry, a 911 prayer alert for anyone that had an emergency prayer need. Mm -hmm. They could call in or text, and then I have a team that's assembled, and we would go into prayer concerning those situations. Wow. And so we've seen people recover. We've seen people healed as a result of what God is doing in the midst of prayer. I believe prayer is essential in the earth on today, especially in the times that we're living in. And so I have a passion for prayer. I believe that, pa that prayer is the engine that gets everything going. I know that, that there are other components that needs to take place that they're in the political realm and other areas, but I believe that there is a need for a people, a, a remnant of people, mm -hmm. to go on their face and begin to pray. And that opens the gap for those that are coming after us to be able to go in and access areas that were closed and be able to present um, their presentations um, because we're here to shut down the enemy and shut his voice down and allow God's voice to be heard in matters of, of government and matters of, of family and matters mm -hmm. of personal uh, individuals. Yes, yes. How long has, has Boots on the Ground been in effect? Boots on the Ground started in 2014. And uh, after uh, 2014, then we began to go out into uh, other regions and uh, go into houses and activate prayer mm -hmm. for the intercessors that were in that house. Because I believe that every house needs a, a, component, a component of intercessors. Yes. Intercessory prayer is so important because sometimes people just pray corporately, but you need a group of people that are willing to make a sacrifice, mm -hmm. go in and begin to tear up that which is being laid by the enemy right. and, the, and close the access of him down so that people will be able, so the ministries can go forth, so that, that the blockades that the enemy has tried to put in front of ministries, then they can be uh, brought down through prayer and intercession. If we're going to do anything great in the mm -hmm. land and mm -hmm. our ministries, it has to be with prayer. Absolutely. Let me ask you, is um, Boots on the Ground intercessory, is that made up of just your church or others that come in to join with you? Boots on the Ground Intercessory Prayer is not just with our church. Uh, the vision for Boots on the Ground is that we gather intercessors in every region, in every state, mm -hmm. and that they have the same component, that they have intercessors wow. in that region that would just go forth and begin to pray on behalf of the, their cities, mm -hmm. their families, and on their ministries. And so we're looking for people from all other regions to begin to partner with us because we believe that prayer is not just uh, located in one particular pocket of people, but God wants this to go lo global because yeah. of the needs that are in the nation, and so we can do more if we mobilize together, so it's not about a church affiliation, it's about people that love prayer and desire to go on their face and begin to make a change through prayer and intercession. Nothing, everything that's happening today is a result of what we have not done right. as intercessors, mm -hmm. a lack of, of, of our submission to the place of prayer and intercession, but when we begin to mobilize, go on our face, then we will see great things begin to happen. Wow. Let me ask you, what, what was the beginning of your prayer uh, initiative for your own personal self? What, how did that all come, to, come into play? My mother was a prayer warrior. 
she was heavily in intercession. Mm -hmm. And so my mom uh, would pray everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the grocery store, she didn't care. She would just pray for everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that that, that that was in her, mm -hmm. that seed of prayer that was in her transferred over into me. At first I didn't, you know, mm -hmm. I would think, oh, she's praying, she's praying, she's mm -hmm. praying, you know, but God began to touch my heart and now I understand the passion that she had for prayer because she not only just prayed for people, she prayed them through situations, she prayed them through conversions in their life. And so that prayer passion that's, mm -hmm. that was in her, it is now in me because I believe that prayer and, and laboring before God, even on behalf of an individual, will cause their lives to be changed. Wow. And, and, and obviously, she was praying for you. Oh, absolutely. So that, that's where, why you're where you're at right absolutely. now. It wasn't just that she was in, uh, exposed to it, but I'm sure she was yes. sending up some prayers saying, touch my daughter, touch my baby's heart. Yes. Make her and would make me sit there with her while she was praying. So, wow. You know, wow. but God is so amazing. You never know the, 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 the depths of what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and you and I would never have imagined that that would be, be such a prayer passion in me to pray for others and to pray for our nation and to and to understand and know because often people don't understand the importance of prayer. Mm -hmm. Many people just come for their prayer needs. Yeah. They come and I look at it as the outer court. The co corporate prayer is like outer court to me. Everybody comes mm. to corporate prayer. And you don't have to do anything special to be involved in to corporate prayer, mm -hmm. to be there. Prayer goes on whether you engage in it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and you might feel the power of God because you did nothing. But mm -hmm. when you're talking about going to that next level, because I believe that prayer has layers in it mm -hmm. and has levels in it. When you really want to go into that deeper place with God in mm -hmm. prayer, mm -hmm. then you come out of that corporate place of just being satisfied with uh, me, mine, and I, and God, I thank you for blessing me with a house, a mm -hmm. car, and all those things. And you begin to understand the compassion and the passion that God had when he says he wants us to go into that deeper place because he's really calling us come wow. and so it's up to us to hear the call and the bid of God to come and not allow the distractions of the world and not the allow the distract distractions of people to cause us and keep us out of that place of intercession and prayer well, give me give me the, the normal day for an, uh, an intercessor a person that that's what they do give me, what's a normal day for an intercessor I mean, and, 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 you know, whether they work, yeah. whether they're a stay-at-home mom or whatever they do, full-time ministers, what, what, what would be a typical day? Prayer is constantly going. It doesn't mean that, that you've got to go and, and lock up in your closet for mm -hmm. eight hours and just pray. Prayer is constantly mm -hmm. going on the inside of you all day. Then you are sending up prayers. God is giving you downloads of people to pray for. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people that you don't even know. Wow. And so you can do that and still do your everyday duties. But it's just a place of a, a dwelling place of prayer that that whelms up on the inside of you. And you know that God is saying, pray for that individual. And sometimes it's it's just a short prayer. And sometimes God places a burden on you to really go in and pray. You know. And sometimes those people you pray for a moment and God brings them back to you. So I believe that that place of that intercessor is always being open and available to uh, what it is that God is calling us to stand in the gap for mm -hmm. and begin to pray for others because I believe that's what intercession is. We are standing in the gap and we are praying for a need, whether it's for a nation, whether it's for a people, whatever it is, we have to be on call when God says and gives us those downloads of people that we need to be interceding for. You, you sound like a prayer technician. You know, a technician is somebody specializes in a particular area. And so the way, where, what I'm hearing is that this, this, this is a lot of thought, a lot of uh, uh, activity that's gone forth and a lot of development. And um, you're able to just even explain it, articulate it to the point where if someone was wondering whether or not they were um, called to, yeah. to be uh, uh, an intercessor, they could just pick out the points that you've mentioned so far and help them make the decision. But I think we're all called to pray. Yes. I think we're all called to, really all called to intercede. Yes. One for the other because we're one body, many members, and uh, it would be kind of not, it would be kind of strange for us not to be praying for one another, which yes. would make us intercessors. Exactly. But I believe there's different levels for different people. Exactly. Because some people, as you say, are out of court. I yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And some people are in the court mm -hmm. or beyond. Yeah. Have, what, what, what gets you beyond? Uh, and, the, the veil. A desire. 
an appetite. Mm. Nothing happens without an appetite. Mm. You can read books, you can go to classes, but if you don't have an appetite, the scripture says the deer panteth after the water mm -hmm. boils, so does my soul panteth after the water. There has to be a desire, an appetite, because you know in the natural, if you're not hungry, regardless of what is presented to you, you'll say, that looks good, but I'm not hungry. Mm. And mm -hmm. so, so it is with prayer that there's an appetite for more. You might not start off at the place that you want to be. I'm steady asking God, pour into me more. Yeah. Give, give me to a, a deeper place and a deeper realm in you where I can hear you more effectively. But that starts with, because I have an appetite for prayer. I have an appetite to go deeper into places of God because I understand that, that there are realms that I have not touched yet. Yeah. And when you have a hunger and say, I, I have a realm, that's what Moses did when he said that he wanted to see God's glory. He had already seen miracles and things happen, but, but he wanted to go up. He says, hey, I want more. Mm -hmm. I want you to show me more of you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's where prayer is, is that I want um, to, I want more of you. I tell people all the time, they say, well, I don't know all the scriptures. I said, prayer is communication with God. Mm -hmm. I said the word will come because the, the word, as you, as you develop in the word, then, then the prayer would even develop in a, in, in a deeper place. But God is asking for, will you just come and commune with me? Do you have time to take time out of your busy schedule wow. and sit down and begin to commune with me? Because sometimes we get into the busyness, even we as people of God and we as leaders, we get into that busy place mm -hmm. that we're doing all the right things, but we have not sat at the feet of Jesus and said, okay, Lord, what is it that you want me to do now? What is, my, what is the next step? What is that next place? And so in that quiet place, you know, not just talking all the time, you know, I, God was telling me this morning, okay, it's time for me to talk. Mm. I said, okay, I'm going to listen because I've been talking long enough. So let me listen. What do you want to say to me this mm -hmm. morning? Mm -hmm. so, so intercessory prayer is not a, um, for the intercessor, it's not a, a monologue, but it's a dialogue. Yes, it's, it's a life, it's, it's a lifestyle, it's a life changer, it's becoming an aging changer, and as you said that, that all of us are called to pray for one another, but I believe that there, I believe for those that desire to go deeper, mm -hmm. you know, all of the disciples loved Jesus, but they had different assignments on their life, they had a different level of love mm -hmm. for him, and I believe it is with uh, intercession that we, uh, as intercessors, as prophetic intercessors, you know, then, then, then we are able to pray prophetically the will of God in our prayers. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes that does not just look like uh, what someone else might think is a normal prayer because right. prophetic intercession begins to take you into the heartbeat of God and you begin to pray forth uh, the will of God and begin to break through barriers and that the enemy has barricades over. And so in intercession, I believe also that you have to be a seer. You have to begin to see behind the scene. Mm -hmm. You got to know that there's something working behind the scene. Mm -hmm. And intercession takes you behind the scene to begin wow. to show you what's really. Yeah, I know that this person is acting up. I know that this, this nation is crumbling, but I see behind the scene. I see that there's a puppeteer, yes. meaning the enemy that's, that, that's controlling individuals and causing them to be uh, in these different situations. And so it's a job as an intercessor, as you see what's going on, to begin to attack that area so people can get the strings of the, the, uh, the, the, the enemy can be cut and so people can be set free. Wow. Uh, how, how did you come up with name Boots on the Ground? God you? gave it to me. <laughs> he gave it to me and, and, and when he said it, I was like, oh, okay, Boots on the Ground. And, and as I began to look into it, I said, this is military, Mil God. You're, yeah, you're calling us, you're military. calling us to, to really war, war in this place mm -hmm. of prayer and intercession. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, so we, we begin to, uh, we begin to do what it was that, that, that a military person does. Yes. We are first line defense. Yes. And if things get past us, then things get broken down. Mm -hmm. And so as, as intercessors and first line responders, then you know you gotta take a hit for somebody else that's behind that's right. you. That's right, that's right. In the military, they call those reconnaissance. Okay. The reconnaissance people are the people that go out a, a, a ahead or they will call them ground pounders. Mm -hmm. And those are the ones that go ahead um, before and, 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 and scout out. Yes. And they have first hand of what's going on, but then there's always the backup. Yes. And, um, and they would always go forward if, so we could set up our central control, mm -hmm. but yes. they would scout out the area. So yes. when you say uh, um, first responders or first first on the scene to that, um, you actually, when you say pray, uh, intercede prophetically, seeing beyond uh, um, what it is uh, that 
some people will make come to you they want prayer for what's happening right now and that's right. all they can see exactly but your prayer as an intercessor can shift them yes in beyond where they are yes because it goes it begins to break down that area and anytime you're praying prophetically and you begin to hit the target of the enemy uh, where, where the problem really is and you will begin to see a breakdown the person is beginning to be free mm -hmm. because they don't really sometimes we don't even know that there's something else working behind I'm angry but what am I angry yes. about and so as, as a prophetic intercessor God begins to reveal to you uh, the anger that's in that individual and might yes. begin to they, they might have anger from a childhood mm. they, they, they might have anger from rejection and so in order and I'm praying for anger, but I'm also praying for those spirits that are, 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 are pushing that person to anger. I'm coming against that spirit of rejection, that spirit of, of, uh, of low self-worth, and all those things that mm -hmm. the, the Lord begins to show us. Wow. So, um, boots on the ground, how did it become, um, and, what, and what can people who, who, who may plan to attend, what can they expect on boots on the ground? How, okay. what, what, what will be the flow? Okay. Well, well, one of the things, uh, Boots on the Ground, I, I was doing a, a women's conference mm -hmm. every year, and God says to shift it. He said, I don't want you to do a women's conference. I want you to do a prayer summit. He said, I don't want it to be a conference. I want it to be a summit, a summit, because I want, uh, I want the generals to be called to this place, this high place, uh, to discuss a strategy about how we can overcome the uh, wiles of the enemy. Mm -hmm. And so I obeyed and I, I switched from the women's conference. I told my husband, I said, I believe God is saying for me not to do a women's conference, but to shift into a prayer uh, summit. Mm -hmm. And so we did it one last year and it was, it was a blessing beyond what we could even imagine. Mm -hmm. And so we have workshops that are coming. We have instructors that are coming in. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a class on prayer mapping um, Explain that. Uh, prayer mapping is uh, biblical, and um, you know people might look it up. But prayer mapping is where uh, you search out and surveillance uh, the area or the region that you're going into, or uh, say you're going into uh, Detroit, mm -hmm. and there the, you have people that are able to research what's going on mm -hmm. on that land, mm -hmm. what's going on in that Reconnaissance. region. Reconnaissance. Yes. That's what that yes. is. Okay. And begin and and then begin to. Uh, give that to the inter the other intercessors so that we can begin to come against the spirits that are hoovering over that particular city or over mm -hmm. that particular region so that when the when when, when the general comes in to that place mm -hmm. to uh, minister then then ministry is made easy for them because we've done the battleground before they even got there and so they don't have to get into that part of the battle easy uh, easy ministry becomes easy for that individual that's going into that territory that's a prayer strategy mm -hmm. And prayer is effective when there's a strategy. Yes. And, the, and you get that from God. And how, yes. And how, wow. Um, so, so what else? You got the workshop. Uh, yes. And we have um, we have drawing the battle line. That's for praying wives. How to draw a battle line with the enemy that says I'm a wife of prayer. Mm -hmm. That I'm not going to allow the enemy to come in and to disrupt my my marriage, to disrupt my home. And so we have a um, a woman of God that. Uh, I saw one of her Facebook pages and I've known her since she was a small child and she did a, a teaching on that and I thought this is really great because sometimes people need to know that when your marriage gets under attack, divorce is not the answer. Right. Separation is not the answer, especially when you have two people that love God. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, we have to understand that there is something else working underneath that and so we're going to, she's going to engage us as wives to give us wisdom how to pray effectively uh, for our marriage and so that our homes and our marriages can become stronger. Wow. And we also have something for the youth. Uh, we have two uh, dynamic uh, instructors there because it's important that you understand and know how to pray early. We've got to get our youth early mm -hmm. because everything else is trying to get them early. And so we have to build a foundation of prayer and intercession sure. in them and let them be able to understand how to engage with the enemy and how to even uh, know when the enemy is coming in. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be doing some interaction. They're not going to just get preached to. They're going to be doing some interaction uh, with the youth. Wow. And that's from age um, 10 to 15. Okay. Okay. And then we have the millennials, and we're going to do something. You know, millennials are radical, so mm -hmm. we, we know that that's just going to be a radical session that's going on. But we have all types of workshops, and wow. then we have our main speakers at the 7 o'clock uh, on Friday. And then on Saturday, we have some more workshops. And then on um, 
said after that, then we have uh, Rain is going to come, Rain and the Refresh team. Okay. And then we have our speaker, uh, Prophetess Erica Goldman, is going to be there. Okay, wow. And then you're going to close out on Sunday, though. We're going to close out, no, we're going to close out on Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, Elder Charlotte Willingham will be doing the closing for us for uh, Reload. That's powerful. Well, as I stated, we'll be there. Um, my wife might make it both days oh, now since God. you're telling me what you're telling me. I'll just let her go. We'll fill in mm -hmm. here somewhere. Oh, I would love that. Um, but um, so um, let me ask you, um, this is, you said God changed it from it being a women's conference to it being a prayer summit. And now, so um, it, are men involved? Men are absolutely involved because I believe that God wants the men to be right there mm -hmm. uh, as the heads mm -hmm. and, and, and be the first to be able to ha be, have strength in prayer. Uh, Apostle, we're doing a workshop on the Vanguard Warriors, okay. uh, men only, and um, we have Apostle Norris Johnson. He's going to be there. It's okay. not men only, but men are coming. Sure. Men are coming and men are, are engaging because mm -hmm. it's not just the women's thing. You know, sometimes people have perception we say prayer is women. No. That's God right. is calling the men to the forefront, and we have some powerful uh, men that are intercessors that are going to break through those barriers, uh, mm -hmm. even as men, and cause change and um, uh, revolution, resolution to come in those areas. Wow. As I was sitting here, I just uh, sensed in my spirit that this boots on the ground will be just not for Chicago, but you're, you're, are you already doing it different places now, or, or has there been a boots on the ground summit? in any other states at this point? We've sent, we've, we've taken a small team and gone into some, some, some various houses okay. of worship and for activation. Okay. But our goal is to have it uh, centralized and then this location be the main uh, headquarters, headquarters uh, to come together on October, but then we would go into other regions mm -hmm. as needed and activate and put coordinators in that area that, that are in that region so that they can build up the people that are in that particular region. And as we all collectively pray for the different regions that we're in and the units that we're in, then we will assemble back for that main onslaught of the enemy in October. Yes. Now, when you were talking about um, certain places that you go in and, and, and you map out, um, there are certain spirits and that, that, that just uh, are like Chicago, from what mm -hmm. I understand, is a, has a spirit of murder, mm -hmm. the, the Capone days and, yes. and the gangsters and all of that. Yes. Um, and people have been praying um, uh, over that or against that. That that. Um, but let me ask you something. How important do you think it is for leaders, renowned, well-known leaders, to be involved in these types of functions? Not that we're saying that they're not, because mm -hmm. leaders have, you know, large churches have the uh, resources to do so exactly. many things. Yes. Um, but I'm ask The question I'm asking is the involvement that. Um, people who have um, uh, not just the resources but the influence themselves. How important is it that, that people such as that get into it? It is very important because we are trying to mobilize an army of intercessors, mm -hmm. uh, not for any particular denominations. And certainly there are, uh, we have some generals that are right here in our city mm -hmm. that are powerful, um, that, that, that are effective. And I just believe that each one of us have a part to play in this, this, this mobilization that God is calling forth in this hour mm -hmm. and in this season uh, for us because we need all hands on deck. Mm -hmm. We can see the signs of the time. We can see uh, all of the, the destructive forces that the enemy is doing. But when we mobilize as one mm -hmm. and, and not, no one is a big chief but Jesus. Mm. That's right. Amen. Whoever has the agenda mm -hmm. has the agenda. And so I don't have to have thousands and thousands to lead uh, this crusade of uh, mobilization for this army that God is raising up. But God is awesome because he's always taken a remnant of mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. uh, to do great things. That's right. And so God is not even looking at numbers. He's looking at, can I find a remnant of people that love prayer so, that love me so, that will have the burden that I have to see people set free and to see nations changed and see lives changed. Can I have a people that will look and see what's going on and begin to go on their face for it and know that the strategy of the enemy and know how to abort his plans. And it's gonna take not just our boots on the ground, it's gonna take all of us 
as intercessors, as leaders, mm -hmm. and leaders being open for change and shifting and know that God is shifting, that the hours are changing and, and, and shifting, and that maybe I need to have someone come in and activate my intercessors. I, I, maybe my church needs to go to another place of a deeper place in prayer and intercession and be willing to say, come on in, uh, 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 let's uh, bring, them, bring them in and let do, because we're not trying to get any uh, speaking engagements. We right. just want the, the spirit of prayer and intercession to be pushed through uh, those individual houses so that they can be empowered to do greater things for the work that God's already called them to do. Like we go into houses for all other things that we do that yes. are popular and don't yield the results that yes. are necessary for people to really walk in their breakthrough. Yes. Because there's a lot of excitement and there's a lot of um, 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 glitch to a lot of stuff, but it yes. doesn't break break people through and get yes. them delivered for yes. what they for, what, for, for, for for the way they should live. I need to shift for a moment and just uh, let our audience know that you'll also be opening up um, our conference, which is you no know, yes. our crusade. It's yeah. so uh, ironic that you said that because God told us not to do a conference. Mm -hmm. He told me not to do. This is a crusade. Yes. And um, an ongoing something that we will be mobilizing and we'll be uh, planning. Um, and, and we're going to be proactive in all that we're trying to do with this. But you're going to be our opening speaker Amen. on February 2nd Amen. for Honored. the uh, Cross Crusade, Women of the Cross. So I, can, um, I can't imagine mm -hmm. at this point. I just know it's going to be awesome what God's going to give you. Um, being an intercessor, and, 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 and when I think about intercessory in the cross, and I think about the women who were praying for Jesus, it's, yes. it's, I, I just can't imagine what yes. God would download into you for yes. that, but I'm excited to know yes. that I believe that you're the right person to open things up for Amen. us, and uh, whatever God tells you to do. So let's, let's, um, so let's talk about the conference. Um, the conference is, I, we got three minutes. Mm -hmm. I want to, I want to, I want to, um, uh, Roland, would you put the slide up and let Prophetess talk about the conference? Um, the conference begins on October 13th through, through the 15th. Mm -hmm. And on October 13th, uh, it kicks off October 13th. Classes start at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. and move on to 1. We have lunch. We break for lunch. Lunch is included in the registration. Mm -hmm. Give the people a chance to get a little rest and, and just muse on what God has departed and downloaded in them. Mm -hmm. And then we come back at 7. And then on Saturday, we have a few uh, uh, workshops, and then we go into our worship service, and we have a speaker for our 12 o'clock noon session. Okay. So we're out about 4 o'clock on Saturday, and then okay. Sunday we meet at uh, 10 o'clock at our church, Ordained of God, 13750 South Layden Avenue in Chicago. Registration is still going on. Registration is still going on. It's $45, mm -hmm. and that, that includes the, their uh, lunch and all of your registration materials. Uh, the uh, hotel, I believe, is still open. We had to add some more blocks I on. Heard. So prayerfully, people can still get rooms. Okay, so you heard it, folks. It's, it's, um, it's registration. Wh where's registration? Registration, uh, they can find everything on the Boots on the Ground prayer line, uh, Boots on the Ground intercessory team on our Facebook page, yes. and it gives you the whole, all of the information for the hotel. The hotel is at the Double Tree in Skokie, but all of the uh, information is on there. Okay. Would you look into the camera, just and just uh, just share with uh, those that are watching uh, the importance as we started out the importance Amen. of intercessory prayer. Amen. I want you to know how important prayer is in this hour. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world. We have hurricanes, we have tornadoes, we have all kinds of things and governmental uh, challenges, and even in our personal needs. But all of those things, God is looking for a people that would say, Lord God, I trust you in everything. And sometimes things might get hard, sometimes things might be low. You might be in the valley right now, but I want you to understand and know that prayer is the answer, that God is able to lift us up out of, prayer, out of our situation through prayer and intercession. I want you to come to this uh, summit. It's going to be amazing. It's going to challenge you in some areas. It's going to strengthen you in some areas. You're going to leave that summit changed for the better. I want you to meet us out there. That's uh, Boots on the Ground Prayer, Intercessory Prayer Team. You can go on our Facebook page and register. It is not too late. 
bring your children. Our children need to be empowered. Our children need to be brought up in the ammunition of the Lord. And you might say, well, my children are in church. That's not about what we're talking about here. We're talking about empowerment, prayer empowerment that's going to cause them to be able to bypass the peer pressure and all of the things that are going on in this present time. So I want you to join us out there. I look forward to seeing you. Let me know. If you saw this broadcast and you come, let me know that, that, that you saw it and you were excited about it yes. and you are here because of it. Amen. Well, thank you Amen. so much for that. Listen, I'm going to be at the conference. My wife's going to be at the conference and you should be at the conference. We're even bringing our children to the conference. So listen, I want to thank Prophetess uh, Jacqueline Amen. Ryan. God bless you God once bless again you. and thank you for sharing with us. Listen, this has been Chicago Live. I'm Larry Fisher. Thank you. Until next time, God bless. All right. Thank you.